dry, sunny and warm start to next week. That's how it's looking. Now going, Charlie, back to both. Matt, favourite um, Gary Barlow song? Oh, my word. That's on the spot. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of take that ones now. Uh, do you want to see how Gary Barlow's responded to you failing in that <laughs> response? I'm glad, I'm glad I'm he sorry. didn't choose a song and it wasn't mine. That's the point. <laughs> that would have been yeah. worse, that, wouldn't it? That would have been worse. Yeah. That's yeah. always possible when it's me, Gary, it to be is. honest. It is. <laughs> well, very well. Uh, Gary Barlow's here, as you can Matt, see. Thanks. And a man, man with keyboard arrives in the studio. That's Look, you right. brought your little Nothing. keyboard with you. The sad thing is. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. Didn't stop Charlie trying to plug a laptop. Well, I tried to. I tried to it. kind of put this I, in there, but it didn't make any difference. You, you, you need to be careful where you're putting that thing. <laughs> because, well, I thought it might. It, <laughs> it might, might not bring everything to life that much. So, but explain because this is a bit of your history, isn't it? This is very personal for you. It is actually. It was sort of my entry into music. Uh, I got this for, for for Christmas when I was eleven, and um, yeah, this was. The day it all began, I guess, and uh, once that door opened, uh, I've never been able to... Actually, the feeling I, I had when I first played this never left, actually. Do you think we should, do you think we should get Gary Barlow to play something that we can't hear? <laughs> it's like we got it. So you could... Play, can you play something? Play so the we just see tune, your hands working on I'm the... playing the theme tune to the show now. <laughs> do you know, <laughs> when I see you with that, it feels like it's your comfort blanket. It feels like that to me too. When you came in, like when you were just chatting, it was like you were n not not nervous tip, but it was like a, a real comfort you're to so you. Right. And we've seen your show, which is why you're you're on, because it's something completely different, something I did not expect from you. So you're like telling a story in the theatre of your life, and it, you always go back to the keyboard. It's like it it's that moment of your pause and your kind of safety net. Well, it is, and obviously, I did my first gig when I was 11, and I really haven't stopped since. So I've spent many, many years making music on stage. Uh, but the show that you've been to see, you kind of came to watch me a couple of weeks ago when we were in Manchester, it's kind of the flip to that. There's a lot of chat, there's a lot of storytelling, um, there's very minimal music in it. But, but when I return to that place of music, it's so natural to me. Why are you doing the show? It's called A Different Stage. Why are you doing it? This idea started about four years ago for me. Um, like I said, I started playing gigs when I was very young and I used to play every night of the week. And um, nowadays we do a tour every three, four years and it, I, I want some bit, something that would fill in that gap between those tours, something that wasn't music based. Um, and I came up with the idea for this show. And it's taken a long time to, to work out what it was and the, the, how do you portray a life story uh, with bits of music, bits of chat. Um, I think you'll agree we go through all the emotions, me included, on the night. Um, well, let's start with some of the... the uh, there are some great anecdotes in amongst the stories. Your early days of playing in kind of uh, nightclubs and, you know... Round here. Round here. Yeah. The working man's club. Working man's yeah. clubs. Well, that was the route back then. That's the thing, that, that that was the route to get to where you wanted to go to, is get your experience, get out there, gig night after night, and hopefully someone will spot you or... And are you doing requests at that point? Are you doing, are you doing sort of, uh, you know, numbers that Definitely. people... Definitely. Are... Requests, open mic nights. I used to sit trying to find people's keys as they sung. It was amazing experience. It was the groundwork. Do you know, it's interesting you said, um, did your dad buy you that? He did. He did. Yes. Because your dad gave you some key advice, which always kept recurring as well. Yes. Which seems simple now, but you did kind of, it didn't always go swimmingly on stage. Well, I don't think it does for anyone. I think uh, we, uh, even with this show I'm doing right now, a Tuesday night's different to a Friday, different to a Sunday matinee. It, that's the wonder of theatre, I think, is that, because it is a very, very theatrical show, that you get something different every night. But rehearse and rehearse. be prepared. That, that was my dad's advice. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's always stuck with me. And, and, um, and especially for this show, this is a very detailed, it's a real, for my, when I do my music shows, I, I warm up by doing exercises. With this, I sit and meditate before I go on. It's one of those shows you've got to get your mind together. You do talk about your dad and you talk about your dad passing, mm -hmm. um, and you talk about very personal moments. And I found it interesting that I knew nothing about this program. And when I look at social media and see what people are commenting on, they don't give anything away. Mm -hmm. It's almost like 
it's an intimate but trusted environment with mm -hmm. the people who are seeing it. Whether they're existing fans or new fans, you really have chosen to put a lot of yourself out there. And that's quite a thing to do. Yeah, and, and you know what? There was, there was times, especially with some of the subjects we go to, where I actually thought I was going to have to record the, my voice and just sit and listen to it on stage. But as time's gone on, I've I found that it's, it's been very therapeutic doing this show, as well as all the, the fantastic, the funny, the, the, side, the, the sides of my life where, where success has, has been around me the darker times and the, and the sadder times um, it's been really lovely to just sit and talk it through how's, on a nightly basis how's your family reacted to you sharing various parts of your life so i brought my mum because i thought she would be the one that would struggle um uh, with watching this show and i brought her to the very last dress rehearsal and I was worried about her and uh, she watched the show and she came for the following six nights. I was in the oh. venue, <laughs> she loved it. And that was a relief to me because I, wa I wanted it to be a celebration of everyone who's in it. Uh, you can tell us what you wish, Gary, sitting here uh, live on television about the, the trickier parts of your time, mm -hmm. some of which people will know a bit about and mm -hmm. some of they won't. But it's a brave thing to do to stand on stage in any environment and to talk through bits of bits of your life. Um, full of respect for that because Thank you. Um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I know. It's, I've, do, I've done books and autobiographies and things in the past. It's a very different thing writing something down to saying it on stage. And I think with some of the issues I talk about during this show, I think it's also quite a big thing for a man to be stood on stage talking about some of these things. Um, so it, it, there's a part of it where I don't want to get too deep here, but it's the part of it where it's quite important, some of these things that are being said, as well as the, 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 the music side and the career that people know about. There's, there's always, with any human being, there's a parallel course that, that's going on, which is in here, which is the things that you're feeling, the things that you take onto stage with you that no one would ever have known. And it is as negative. It it's like it's a bit like you've got a pact with the audience because you're sharing a lot yeah. with them. They're in the room, and it's very much in that moment. On a slightly different note, parts of the story people are more familiar with. Uh, Robbie Williams looms. Uh, uh, he, 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 he pops up <laughs> periodically, not literally in person, yes. but in amongst your story, he's he's there a lot, yes. isn't he? From time to time. Yeah, I mean, with we, we call them our brothers, our Take That band members. They're obviously a big part of this story. Um, but, uh, you know, Robbie's story alongside mine was a, was a big talking point at one point. And, it, and it, it, nowadays it's of great humour to me. And I try and bring out the humour in this. But, um, yeah, the whole, the, putting the whole thing together has been a lot of fun. And, and I think you've sat in my audience. They are the best audience. They, they sit quiet, they get on their feet. They get a chance to go through all the emotions on this, on this evening. And you do give them a bit of music as well. They, because they you can, can you imagine? Can you oh, imagine yeah. what they'd be like if you just... Uh, no, I'm not saying, I'm just chatting. But like you say, it's my safe place. It's the yeah. place that every now and again I, I go back to and I'm, I'm OK for a minute. So it's... it's and what about nice. now? What about music? I mean, is this tour... Are you, is it going to go to a lot of places? And uh, is it going to get bigger? Because part of it is the intimacy, isn't it? So how does it work? Yeah, I think... But I think the venue size is right. We're very small. We're, we're in the sort of six to nine hundred. So it's... For me, it's a, it's a small, intimate venue. Um, and the big news today is, is that we're, we're just about to announce the West End, which is in September, end of August into September, and uh, our tickets go on sale next week. I'm, I'm very excited because I wanted it to be well received. Um, I think we're hitting all the right notes and it feels like it's time to go into London. To pardon, not to pardon the phrase, hitting yeah. the right notes. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you in touch with the boys, the brothers? All the you... time. Really? All the time. So, yeah. any plans with Next them? year. I think we're going to do something next year. Uh, we did our last tour in 2019. I mean, for, for the band, the, all, all this, all the Covid's got to be in the background because we play big venues, so we need everyone to be safe. And, and will there be new music? Or will it be... I hope so. I, uh, I would are you love writing? That. Are you writing at the moment? Not yet, but we will be. So, what's changed in the way you write now, from the beginning? Because you were the driving force at the beginning mm -hmm. with the writing, and then others, you know, yeah, got we, involved and collaborate. We more. write as a team now, and 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 this is exciting because our last album was a big greatest hit, celebrating 30 years of music, um, and it it did feel like a big line we drew under our 
time. And um, so this is a, a, a big moment where we can, we can, I think we can really be brave with our new music now. And uh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to get back on the, the stage as well with the guys. How often do you have one of those pinch yourself moments, <laughs> Every uh, Gary? Day. Because the, the, the show is kind of, there's so much about you as a, a young lad and the dreams of a kind of career. And then, then this thing, it, it's happened. It, all of it has happened. And, uh, you know, difficult bits along the way, of course. But you have a lot of that, you're sort of going... I love it. I love my job, I love what I do. I get a thrill every night, I walk on a stage still. When I sit in with this, I still get that same feeling I got, that first Christmas when I was 11. I love music, I love the audiences, feel very fortunate to be able to still do this. I love it. And what about collaborations? As it, if you were to name, if there was a, is there a couple of names of people? Because you've written a lot of music for other people, haven't you? And you've done collaborations with a lot of people. Yes. Is there someone out there that uh, slightly unexpected that you might be talking to or have thought about working with? Or... Not really. Oh, you're just being... <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't you know say what? anyway, Who would you? Who said no to you? No, do you know what? I've, uh, the big moments for me was we sang with Paul McCartney. I, that was incredible. I've done duet with Elton John. He was always my hero. I've kind of, I feel like I'm okay. And actually, my my band is the most important thing at this point. I can't wait for next year. We're going to kick all that off again. And yeah, I feel I, I feel I'm I'm pretty good. Has anyone said no to you? Do you know what? I, I've I don't do sort of duets and things very often. So. Whenever I've asked, I've always been nicely received, so no at this point. But I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> I'm so disappointed we didn't have the correct charger for your Do you know what? Next cable. time. Next time. No one said bring the charger. Well, I just... I assumed that we'd be kind of ba battery operated. This is 1980, this thing. So, yeah. 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 Anyway. They did have batteries in the 1980s. Uh, yeah, I think it did. it's more getting the audio in. But anyway, we'll work it out we'll next time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. the show is really good. Really, oh, really. Thank I you. thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank so you. thank you. Thanks for coming in. Brilliant. Nice to see you both. Um, it is called A Different Stage. Uh, Gary's touring right now. Oh, we have the headline.